I find a hard time with the discipline. There's just a piece of my mind that tells me you don't deserve that. You don't deserve the good things that are coming. And so I have that internal fight that kind of stops me. When I lose control, my brain kind of goes into that flight or fight mode. And at that point, it's just easier to shut down than to push through. We all love control. Every human being is a control freak. We like when things go our way. We like to know what happens. We love the known. We don't love the unknown. And here's the thing. If you don't get over this reaction to being not in control, you'll never be successful as an entrepreneur. Greg, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, Jason. Really excited to be here. Awesome. And for everybody listening, I'm here meeting with Greg Cook. Greg Cook is 36 years old, going to be 37 next month. He's in beautiful Vail right now. And check this out. He spent some time in Portugal, and he's going to be moving there in April, which sounds fantastic. He's in the hospitality industry, and he's a, he's a, he's a snow guy, snowboarding, biking, lots of mountain stuff. He started a new business with his wife four months ago, and we're going to talk today about helping him accelerate that. So, Greg, you ready to dive in? Let's go. Awesome. So we had initially talked about helping with me helping you transition out of your W-2 into a new job. So tell me a little bit about where you're at and how I can help. Let's dive in. Yeah. Uh, so just kind of a quick backstory of how we got started in our business. Um, two or three years ago, uh, we were looking into buying a, house, buying a house here in Colorado. Uh, housing prices didn't make any sense. And then we started listening to Bigger Pockets podcasts and got into real estate investing. We bought our first short-term rental in December of 2022 um, in South Carolina. We fell in love with that business model. And then through other avenues, uh, we found the Airbnb arbitrage model. Um, so that's what we have started as our business. Um, we created our LLC in September, got our first unit in October. And since then, we have uh, scaled up to 10 units um, in just a short time. Um, and so we're working on building all of our systems, automizing uh, those systems. So that way, as we begin in a, we're, that way we can scale properly as opposed to scaling and falling behind. Okay. Okay. So thanks for sharing the situation. What do you want coaching on? I find a, find a hard time with the discipline. I, my whys are there. I think they're big enough, but there's those days where I know I could be getting more done, but I have a hard time pressing through that, um, uh, getting stuck. Um, I've also gone to a couple of masterminds with a gentleman that I really, really respect and admire. And he said a quote to me on the first time I went to him and that really hit home and part of my, my language, but with your subconscious mind in his, and it resonated it says like, everything's going to go to shit. If, even though everything's going great, there's just a piece of my mind that tells me you don't deserve that. You don't deserve the good things that are coming. And so I have that internal fight that kind of stops me from maybe having the most productive day at most times. Okay. Is that what's impacting your discipline? That's a good question. Um, there's probably a few things that are impacting my discipline. One of them being a new entre entrepreneur and still working a W-2 is that balancing act of you know, how much time do I spend on each? And then also adding in the relationship with my wife, even though we're working together, you know, carving out that time for us to just be us, not business partners. Um, so for doing this in the first time in my life, trying to find that balance is where I'm having the most difficulty. Okay. Yes, you have to, you have to create that balance, especially if your partner is your spouse or your business partner is your spouse. Um, but that's actually not that difficult to do. So that's good news. Well, it's, it's, you know how to manage time and it's, it's very easy to get caught up in the excitement of, Hey, we got a business. Hey, we're making money. Hey, we're business partners. Hey, we're a couple like there's, that's easy to mix that on uh, together, especially the beginning when you start to succeed. It's very simple and very easy to do. But what's going to help you long term in your marriage and in your business relationship is if you have an, a, get an agreement in place. A, a, an agreement such as, okay, what are the roles in the business? These are my roles. These are your roles. Okay. 
Also, where do we conduct business, right? Or what hours do we conduct business? You could literally say whenever, and if, and if you work from home, which is nothing wrong with that, you could say whenever we're doing business at home, we wear our baseball hats and I have a red hat and you have a blue hat. These are my, my business hats. So it's, so as best that you can create some form of delineation between the two, you're like, we don't talk, we only talk business in this room in the house or something like that. Does that make yeah. sense? It does make sense. Yes. So it's not that hard to do. It's just, it's just take the time to do it. So have that conversation, set it up, say what's important to us as a married couple. We spend time together. Okay. So we have a date night every Tuesday. You don't have kids yet. So we have a lot of, free, and it's so, so it's an intentional time together. And then business is between these hours. So just take an action item to do that. That's not that hard to do. Right. Um, now you had also mentioned Greg discipline. You said a hard time with discipline. Like, tell me more. Like, what does that mean? I'm having a hard time with discipline. Um, so prior, prior to meeting my wife, I was pretty happy being a ski bum in my thirties. And so I had, I had drive, but I didn't have a goal that I was working towards. And then we decided to go on this journey together and I've found my why, you know, to, to support us, to support our family, um, generationally, as well as now, uh, to give them things that, uh, we've never been able to have in either of our families. So I'll have really good days and I'll just be pumping out work, getting things done. And then I'll hit a roadblock on one of those days. And instead of pushing through that, I'll let it kind of start eating me up. And then in my head, kind of start coming up with excuses to why I'm okay with not getting the rest of the tasks done um, that are just as important as everything that I'd already accomplished. Um, so yeah, with, with me, I just, I'm, I'm so close to breaking through that wall that most entrepreneurs, when they start, they just keep hitting. Um, but I, I just want to shatter it. So I no longer have those days where I'm feeling like I didn't do enough for, for me and my wife and my family and my business. What, what wall are you talking about that entrepreneurs hit? It speaking from my experience, cause that's all I can speak from is there's a point and there's the reason the percentages are what they are when it comes to successful entrepreneurs is once it gets tough I and mean, it's most people don't move past that point. So that that's my pain point is having the mentality of knowing that it's going to be tough and being okay with it and still accomplishing everything that I wanted to accomplish. Okay. So you said when, and thank you for sharing that. And you said, you said really good days when I, I get a lot of stuff done. And then there's other days I hit a roadblock and then pro like, give me an example of a roadblock that affects your productivity and your ability to execute. Uh, I'd speak on towards the end of last week. We were in, we were in the process of uploading two more units onto our Airbnb profile and portfolio. And with our property management system, I couldn't get any kind of contact from them. And instead of just moving on to the next goal, waiting for um, a response back from the company, I just kind of sat down, waited and waited and let it stew as opposed to just continuing on with the other things that I needed to get done. Okay. Why'd you do that? Because I... I felt it was easier to pity myself in all honesty than to accept that something that was out of my control and move forward and then come back to that problem. Well, thank you for the honesty, right? Um, self pity. You, me and everybody listening to it has, has that tool in an arsenal that we use at times. It's actually a form of self connection. So when it feels like, woe is me, it actually meets some of our needs as a human for connection for ourselves. So when, when, when that, like, let's, if, if we can look at that pattern of behavior where we're, we're basically disengaging, like you're actively engaged, there's a disengagement, right? And what usually precedes that? Like what causes like this one situation 
it was a property man is property man- management issue. Is it, it, it like, tell me like, what is the trigger that causes you to disengage like that? If you can, I'd say it's just that feeling of losing control. And that's where it kind of stems from with most of my hangups. When I run into thing, when I lose control, I then begin to shut down and my brain kind of goes into that flight or fight mode. And at that point, it's just easier to shut down than to push through. So I, I think okay. it's the perceived lack of, of control is what triggers it. Okay. Great awareness. That's awesome. What has to happen for you to feel like you're losing control? When I can't control the outcome, um, especially being new in business, it it scares me. Like, am I capable of making this happen, doing the right things to be successful? And to fear, and that would be it for me. Okay. And great awareness, right? We all love control. Every human being is a control freak. Whether we believe that or whether we'll acknowledge that or not, we all like control. We like when things go our way. We like to know what happens. We love the known. We don't love the unknown, right? Yeah. So it's, and, and I don't know if you, how much of my content you've listened to, but one of the big concepts I talk about is known and unknown. When you're operating in the known, you're doing something you know how to do. And, and it's easy to have confidence in the known. Oh, I've done it before. When we get into the unknown, lack of control, it's much harder to create confidence because the, the normal process that we got confidence from in the past is no longer there. We got confidence from previous successes. And here's the thing. If you don't get over this reaction to being not in control, you'll never be successful as an entrepreneur. Understood. Do you know that? Yes, I do. Because your ability to succeed as an entrepreneur is directly related to your ability to operate effectively without control. It's directly tied, directly. I remember Tony Robbins had a saying, it was like, the 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 what is how did it go? The quality of your life is directly proportional to how much uncertainty you can manage. If you can manage more uncertainty, the greater your life is going to be. Because as you grow and expand, the things you control get smaller and smaller and smaller. As a business owner and as a speaker and as a coach, like I, I spend majority of my time in the unknown. <laughs> So let's just acknowledge right now that, and, and this is, and I'm going to, I want to give you the best frame for success to operate in, right? Because you're, you are absolutely right. Most people expect it to be easy. And then the second it gets difficult, they give up, right? That's the way most things go. So what we need to do is we need to expect it to be hard. So, and difficult. So when that happens, we're not affected. We're not phased by it. So what if being an entrepreneur is always hard? What if it never gets any easier? I've got to learn that that's how it is. And that's what I need to expect and move past that and embrace it. Yes, but let's, let's, Let's not leave this call needing to do that. Let's do that right now. Because okay. it's not really a learning. It's a decision. It's a decision to accept that it's difficult. Now, being an entrepreneur is the hardest, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life and consistently continues to be. At the same time, it's the most rewarding thing. Why do I want to go work for somebody else and make no money? No. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's just the game. Now you can get better at it, but we need to not be afraid of the difficulty. I accept that. I'm not afraid of it. So let's, let's try this out loud. So repeat after me. I take full ownership of my life and everything in it. I take full ownership of my life and everything in it. And the truth is, and the truth is being an entrepreneur is hard. Being an entrepreneur is hard. 
It's the di- most difficult thing I've ever done. It's the most difficult thing I've ever done. And it may not get any easier. And it may not get any easier. But I'm okay with that. But I'm okay with it. Because I'm not afraid of difficult things. Because I'm not afraid of difficult things. Because anytime it gets difficult. Because anytime it gets difficult. All I have to do. All I have to do. Is stop and take a deep breath. Is stop and take a deep breath. That is a fact. Yes, it is. Okay. Can you feel that certainty? Yes. That's notice, notice the certainty you're feeling in the unknown. And this is how you use non specific certainty, meaning. One of my favorite ways to to create certainty on the known in the unknown is with this statement. And the statement goes like this. Uh, so you can repeat after me. I will be successful as an entrepreneur. I will be successful as an entrepreneur. Even if I don't know how. Even if I don't know how. Even if it's difficult. Even if it's difficult. Because I won't stop until I do. Because I won't stop until I do. That's real. Feel that? Yeah. Feel that certainty? Mm hmm. So we're getting certainty because we are leveraging a decision of something we can control. You can control your actions, you can control when you stop. So by saying, I am going to hit this target, even though I don't know how, because I'm not going to stop until I do you're getting the certainty out of your ability to decide to not stop moving. Create, like you said, it's like creating that certainty that then will propel you forward because your brain knows that that's going to happen. So it's not going to stop until you get through it and get there. So how are you feeling now? Energized, confident, What are your, what do you think now about discipline? I think it's a a word that gets thrown around when it's more confusion and this was or a scarcity mindset or scared of something. Um, So I I think it's a word that'll be no longer in my vocabulary when it talks about a, a downfall or a, or something holding me back as opposed to the discipline of the certainty of the uncertainty and moving forward with that. 100%. Because you only need discipline when you are lacking a decision. As soon as you make the decision to do that thing, the option to not do it is there. So the simple thing to summarize, what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the option not to. Like, I can already tell that moving to Portugal with your wife in April is not doing that is not an option. Yeah. Nope. We got to go back to our dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Among other reasons, See? but yeah. And that's where people get stuck is they, they haven't decided. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you're balanced and centered. We're getting there. But I'm making the decision to be today. Okay. So let's not. Notice how you feel right now. Did your confidence go up or down when you said that? Up, big time up. It did? Didn't go down? No. Okay. Okay. Because it sounded like you said there there was a little uncertainty in that statement. You said, for now I am. And you're anticipating, you basically said, for now, yeah, I am. And I'm going to be. But we need to get more present than that because that's an old pattern of thinking I feel aligned right now, but I don't know if I'm going to be aligned tomorrow. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. 
So, so let so when I when I ask you again, just say yes, I am. Like, are you a hundred percent aligned with where you need to go right now? Yes, I am. Feel that? I do. So the way you create this this mindset change to make it permanent is that this conversation, I've pulled you into a place, I've helped you get into a place of alignment and certainty. So now you're on a new trajectory. Now our brains run patterns. So what's going to happen is the old pattern is going to run at some point, just like it did 30 seconds ago. So start to become aware of when those new patterns run and when you say it or think it, stop and back up and repeat the confidence statement again. No, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Even though I don't, you can, even if you have no clue what to do, you can say, I know exactly what to do because I'm going to figure it out because I'm not going to stop until I do. Because it's all about getting yourself in certainty in this moment, not worrying about the future. So are you certain now? I am very certain. I am certain okay. right now. There you go. Do you know what to do next? Yes, I know what to do next. There we go. Fantastic. Well, thanks for joining me today, Greg. Thank you so much, Jason. I really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure. 